Hey everybody, welcome back. So I'm gonna give a health update in this video about where things are at with my dialysis and my treatment and just where things are currently. I had mentioned in my last video that I had kind of an up and down week with dialysis last week. It was like a roller coaster. Um, so I've been on dialysis now since January, so it's been coming up on nine months. And I'd say overall, my experience has gradually been getting better and better. You know, I go multiple sessions without feeling terrible. Um, we figure out a pretty good uh, like rate to dialyze me at and a good time. And just my access is really easily to easy to access and everything. So overall, it's been getting better. Um, but there are still those days that are frustrating and leave me feeling pretty terrible. Um, so last week on Wednesday, so Tuesday night I went to bed not feeling great and Wednesday I woke up and when I got there, I told them I just felt fluffy. So fluffy is, is the word that I use to indicate that I feel swollen and like I'm retaining more water and fluid and I have just, I'm just feeling squishy. Um, before dialysis started, it was a whole lot worse. And there were, it, it, the way I would describe it is like, you're walking on a waterbed or you're walking on water balloons and you're really trying not to pop them. And also kind of like, you're trying to run in sand. And I know some people run in sand as a workout, but like, that's not my jam. And it's, um, it's pretty, it's pretty painful. So it hasn't gotten back to the point where I was at dialysis, but some days I wake up or at the end of the day when I go to bed, it's not great. And Wednesday I woke up, not great. So when I get to dialysis, you always weigh yourself. Um, they have one of those really cool scales where it's like silver on the floor and it's just on the wall. Anyway, so you get on that and I had put on, since Monday, I had put on over three kilograms. So they measure in kilograms, not pounds, and they take off in liters, not in like not in pounds or, or ounces. So three, like over three kilograms is nearing over like six, six and a half pounds. And that's a lot for me to put on um, in less than two days. So on one hand, it was nice that like I could feel like my body was holding on to that and I wasn't wrong. Cause it's, it's kind of defeating when like I feel like that, but I go and it does not indicate that I am holding on to any more fluid. Like that's frustrating but this is just uncomfortable. So we get hooked up to the dialyzing machine and we set it to take off 3.2 liters. And something I think I've touched on with dialysis is they really watch your blood pressure closely. So they don't want that top number, at least for me, or at least at my clinic, they don't want that top number to go under a hundred. And if it does, they'll pause your machine so that your body can like recoup and get that number back over hundred. And I, I have it, I wouldn't say frequently, frequently, but it, it happens sometimes we'll have to turn it off for about 20 minutes or so, but then my blood pressure rebounds and we start it up again. On Wednesday, it did not come back up to 100 the whole rest of the time that I was in the chair. And so when my three hours and 15 minutes were up and we undid everything, we, I don't know why this hair is being so weird, I'm sorry. Um, we only end up getting about 1.9 off. So I had to go into the rest of the day still feeling fluffy. So I was kind of cranky. I wasn't grumpy or cranky with my with the staff at my clinic. And I, you know, it wasn't really an outward cranky, but inside I was just I was just so frustrated. Cause it's like I follow like the diet recommendations and the fluid recommendations and I you know live my lifestyle the way that they recommend when you're in kidney failure and all that sort of stuff and some days it's fine like I'll tell you about Friday when it was fine and other days like last Wednesday your body just says today is not your day and it's frustrating and it's defeating and it's unpredictable so Anyway, so I went home and 
The upshot to the day was that my oldest sister was visiting. So she had driven out to Omaha to visit my sister there. And then she came down here and stayed one night with my other sister that lives down here and then one night with me. So we ended up going out to dinner and then we came home and she had brought over with her um, this large, like I think the brand is like Sterilite. It's like one of those clear storage bins. It's pretty thin, but like long. And we had put all sorts of family pictures in there. Um, a few years back when we moved my mom into an assisted living place and we just hadn't gone through it. So she brought it with her over to my apartment and we both love like looking through stuff like that. It's, we both just really love it. And it was so much fun. We, I saw, I mean, I'd seen a lot of the pictures but there were some that I'd never seen before. And they ranged from, you know, like 1968 when my parents got married up until, you know, three, four years ago. So it was a long time, I mean, there were a lot of pictures of my family before I was even part of my family. And so that's, that's always weird to like think like my family existed before I was even here. So, um, yeah, but I found a uh, one set of pictures that I kind of wanted to share. So, all right. Okay. So this picture, this is second grade and this is me. And I think I must be seven years old, seven seven okay so the shirt I'm wearing it is a shirt it says Natalie and underneath my name is like a purplish pink dinosaur this was my favorite shirt for years I loved this shirt and look how adorable that little girl is and my mom she could that she didn't like that these hairs were sticking out from behind my headband so we went in for the picture retake day I wore the same shirt and this is the result of that. Yep. So I went home sick from school that day. I was not feeling well. And so like which one is better or worse? I mean, this aside, this is adorable, but this doesn't have the, the hair sticking out. My mom did some of her magic and she talked to the photo people and she got to keep both sets of pictures. But so that's a seven year old me. Here we go. Um, but yeah, so that was that was that was a lot of fun. And so she stayed over and then she left Thursday to drive back to where she lives. And that day was an odd day because I was fearful that that whole day I was gonna feel fluffy. Um, but throughout the day I sweat kind of a lot when I slept that night. And then I don't like not really TMI, but like I peed a lot more on Thursday than I typically do because people on dialysis typically don't urinate that much because the dialysis is what takes out the fluid from your body because your kidneys aren't working to make that much urine so mine still makes some but like not not a whole lot but that Thursday it made more than typical so I went when I went on Friday I mean I knew I needed dialysis and I still I felt like I was ready for it but not overwhelmingly so like I had on Wednesday and when I got on the scale I'd only gained about 0.4 or 0.5 above where I left on Wednesday so I really hadn't put on that much. So luckily on Friday, we were able to put on enough to take off to get me back down to my dry weight. And my blood pressure never dropped. Um, I didn't bleed extra after we were done. I didn't have a headache. I didn't have a stomach ache. My body didn't hurt. I was in and I was in and I say in and out of there. It was still about three hours and 45 minutes, but there was no struggle. And that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And I mean, I'm not like, obviously I'm not mad about it, but it's just, again, it's just like what changed between those few days and my body? Because nothing really changed. And that's just part of how this journey goes, you know? And I can just hope that there's more and more Friday days than there are Wednesday days. So then the weekend came. And if you've watched... One of my prior videos, I talk about my intense interest in presidential history. So this weekend, one of my friends and I, we drove out to Abilene, Kansas, and we went to Dwight D. Eisenhower's Presidential Library and Museum. And I got a magnet for my refrigerator. I like Ike, and I do really like Ike. Like, that was a big, long sense of Ike's. Um, learning more about him, like I knew he was a five-star general and stuff, 
and also president. And I just learned more about kind of the way he conducted himself and himself in the military and himself as president. And right now I'd say that he's like my favorite and that might change. And if I do more research, I might find out maybe he's not, but like right now, like, yeah, I really, I really do like Ike. And I also got a new presidential trivia book that I haven't read yet, but it's kind of like by this little kid that knows all this stuff. And so I thought that was, that was kind of fun. So that was Saturday. Then Sunday came and went and we had to watch the Chiefs uh, lose their game against the Colts. And that was very disappointing. And also they played at noon. So it's, I all, I mean, I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I like it more when the team, like the team I want to watch plays like at the 325 or the nighttime game. Cause you kind of wait for it during the day and then like it's done and the day's kind of winding down. If they play at noon and they're done at 315 or 320, like Joel and I, he came over and watched it with me and I'm just like, I don't know what to do with the, with the rest of my day. So I mean, I know that's not a big deal. It was just, it's always surprising to me when they play at noon and I'm like, so I have the rest of the day. And yeah, so football season obviously is well started now. And I get all sorts of new questions about calls and penalties and scoring and all that stuff. But slowly but surely, I'm starting to learn more. Um, the new... I mean, the term I talked about more last year was um, past interference. Isn't that the point? Right? But this time, I was, I think it was a game last week that I watched and Joel wasn't with me and I was just watching it on TV. And I was like, it was like an illegal receiver or an ineligible receiver. And I just thought, what? And Joel tried to explain it to me and it's, I guess it's like a linebacker or something and they can't go past a certain line and they can't catch the ball past that line or something. And in my head, I'm like, if they're on the offense team, shouldn't they be able to catch the ball? Like, isn't that the point? Soapbox, not gonna do it this time for you guys. But anyway, that was some of my minor thoughts right now on football. Anyway, okay, and so then yesterday, Monday, dialysis was even more perfect. Like I hadn't put on too, too much over the weekend. And um, it was just like Friday. Everything that we wanted to take off got taken off. And also the time just flew by. I don't know what was different about this day, but I started, I was on at 11.15 and before I knew it, it was 1.45. And I, I, go, I, I go until like 2.40, but I mean, the first part just flew by and I wasn't doing anything different. I was like playing a game on my phone and listening to a podcast. So I don't know, I'm grateful for it. It's always nice when the day goes by faster than you think it's going to. But yeah, so dialysis is still kind of a crazy circus that I'm getting used to. And then I also got news uh, two weeks ago and then today I got it taken care of that my um, my access, like my flow, I'm not really sure what that means. It just means it's not really like the, it's like the blood flow kind of, but it's just like the level of like clearance that you have and clearance is like the clearance of the toxins and stuff that dialysis does. My number, I don't know what the number is measured in. I don't, I just see the number. It like two months ago, it was at a thousand or 1200, which is, they said really good. And then last month it dropped to 700. And then this month it dropped to 400. So today I had to go in for a minor procedure where they go in and they kind of take x-ray sort of inside of the graft that I have to see like what's causing that number to go down. And they can do, it's called like a fistulogram, like an angiogram, but in your graft. And I have a graft, not a fistula, but they call it the same thing. Um, and they go in and if, if they can, they'll do a little like a balloon thing to stretch out the graft or the fistula again. And what they ended up finding on mine is that towards my shoulder, where the, where the graft goes up, towards my shoulder right there, it kind of makes a curve. And somehow the curve has turned into a V, which constricts. So they're able to put the balloon through and stretch it out again. But since it's at that located right there, they kind of said it might be just be a Band-Aid and we'll have to keep doing this. It might also get to the point where they have to go in and not give me a new graft because my graft itself is still perfect. It's a wonderful graft. It's just that one area. They'd have to kind of like re reroute it um, so that it doesn't have that kink in it. So that, I mean, th they didn't seem incredibly like worried about it and I'm not worried about it. It was a very simple procedure. So 
it's just like, again, my body just doing what's it, what it wants to do and not always um, being great to me. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's, that's where I am now. And luckily it wasn't so invasive that my arm is all puffy and swollen. I have a official bandage on it. Like this is like official and I can't take it off until I go in for dialysis next uh, tomorrow. I can take, I'm not supposed to take it off tomorrow. Um, and they'll take off dialysis, but they said if it falls off, that's fine. So me being a picker, I'm not going to pick at it. I'm not going to pick at it, but I'm glad it can come off tomorrow. <laughs> so dialysis wise, that is, that's the gist. And so the other thing that I'm working on and kind of struggling with is my gastroparesis. And luckily I haven't had much in the terms of flare-ups since I got released from the hospital. Um, but I still have been dealing, you know, with like stomach aches and cramping and just feeling a fullness and just overall just knots in my stomach and stuff. And, and so I had an appointment actually this morning. So story about that, I, the point was at eight. I set my alarm for 720. I live about a mile, a mile and a half away from my hospital. So I can get there in under, I can get there in like eight minutes. Um, but somehow, and the somehow being me didn't actually activate the alarm. The alarm didn't go off and I woke up at 8.06. So I called the clinic like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And they said, if I can get there before the half hour mark, cause it was down for an hour long appointment. So if I can get there before the half hour mark, I can still have my appointment. If not, we probably will have to reschedule. So I throw on some sweatpants and a hoodie and I get there and it's, I get up there at like 8.28. And so they couldn't, the, 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 the provider couldn't see me at that time, but they said they had a 10.30 appointment that they could fit me in at. And I was like, all right. So I just waited. So I was waiting in the waiting room until about 10.25 and they called me back. And it was worth the wait in that waiting room. Cause first of all, A, it was my fault that I didn't get there on time, but the appointment itself was fantastic. It was with a nurse practitioner, which was fine. We discussed all sorts of different routes of uh, medication and treatment kind of that we hadn't really discussed before this appointment and made some plans of action, which I'm really looking forward to and I'm excited about. Um, we're starting one medic where well, we were going to start one medication called Motegrity, but upon the pharmacist's um, orders or whatever, I think he said that people on dialysis can't take that medication, which was disappointing because that was the one we really wanted to start. But so we're starting a different one uh, tomorrow when I can get over to the pharmacy uh, because after my procedure today, I can't drive for 12 hours. And that's after obviously the pharmacy closed. But so we're starting that and then I'm gonna go in and get it's not an um, it's not an endoscopy exactly because they're not looking for anything, but they're gonna go in and they're gonna kind of do kind of like an angiogram, fistulogram on my uh, my um, what is is, is the esophagus? No, it's the one. Whatever the is it the the one that the food goes down? I can't think right now, but the esophagus. I'm pretty sure. And then they're gonna try and like stretch that out towards the bottom to help food move more quickly down into the stomach and then with the hopes that the medicine will help the food once it gets into the stomach move faster and she said that that works for some people for a couple weeks or a few weeks a few months sometimes it lasts longer they can do it you know they can do it more than one time um but if it doesn't work for very long or at all it we might also look into doing some like botox injections into my into that area which at first no not botox but i guess it kind of like a certain type kind of helps people with gastroparesis and stomach motility problems helps that um, relax and move better. So that's really um, exciting. Just having that game plan set in place. So yeah. So I, I mean, gastroparesis doesn't typically go away. Um, it can kind of be in remission for a long time, but Flare-ups are always something um, that can happen and it affects my everyday life. It affects what I eat and what I don't eat and just my regular day to day. Um, when you just have food, you know, just sitting in your stomach for a lot longer than it should, it gets really, really uncomfortable. Um, and something interesting, um, 
I remember a while ago, Joel and I were talking and so when we, so when we go out to eat, like I hate choosing restaurants and I don't know what that's from exactly, but I just, I just hate choosing restaurants. I guess maybe I'm just afraid the other one like won't want to go to the restaurant that I pick. I don't know. It's whatever. But so I, 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 I pick sometimes or I'll, you know, make him give me some choices or, you know, whatever. But he, he had noticed something and I had never thought about this really before, but cause I mean, he knows about my stomach issues and how delicate sometimes my, my stomach is. And, and he's like, I choose food. I mean, he's, he's saying him, like I choose food because I think it's, it's going to taste good. And I, I want it and all this stuff. But when you choose food, it's more like you think, will this food make me hurt tomorrow? Will this food settle okay in my stomach? Like, I mean, I try to choose food that I know I'll like, but some, but he's right. Like the first thing I think about when I'm out to eat or even at home eating something is, am I going to pay for this tomorrow? Am I going to, is this a, an okay choice for where my stomach's at and where my body is at right now with my gastroparesis? And it was just kind of an interesting perspective that I'd never really, um, thought about and it's true so I mean I think with gastroparesis I'm not allergic to any foods like I don't have any food allergies but it's just knowing what foods are triggering to my gastroparesis and it's a delicate system and it's kind of like my dialysis a food will be fine forever and then out of the blue all of a sudden my body's like we don't like that food right now like no don't eat it or foods that I haven't eaten for a while and I'll take a bite of and it's fine. My, my body's like, we kind of want that now. And it's really, it's a really hard game to keep up with and it's not fun. Um, but that was just like an interesting thought that I'd never really thought about. I mean, when I was a kid, when I was this cute little, this cute little kid, I didn't think about food and I didn't think about how it was going to affect my body. I was just like, give me more bread. I want some ice cream. I like apples, you know, it was just, I just ate what I wanted. And, and, and now as an adult, I just, I have to be more cognizant in my choices and it kind of, it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks a lot of the time. So anyway, so that's the update that I have today. So I'm really excited about that. Um, there are 13 presidential uh, libraries and I've been to three except the Lincoln one is not on the official list of presidential libraries. I think it's because it's privately owned. Um, but yeah, so I'm making some plans to try and visit some of the other ones. I might make some trips to other states and just go visit them. And that's exciting. So that's something that I have to look forward to. Anyway, so that's the health update. And I just really appreciate you guys watching this with me. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.